Hello and welcome to episode 140 of the Boot Nerds podcast. J. Mike, what is going on? Well, what is going on again? This is um, <laughs> this is episode 140, version two. Version two. <laughs> Uh, you won't ever see version one. Um, what happened was that we actually recorded this. Well, for us, it was yesterday. And um, then in the middle of everything, Josh uh, gets a really weird look on his face. <laughs> and he's like, uh, uh, Jay, and, and, and your, your power just went. Yeah, the power went out. Nobody knows why, but it ended up being out for like 16 hours yesterday. No clue. Eventually went back on. But nobody knows why yet. I'm sure it's going to come out okay. in the news today or something like that. But we, we lost all the footage. Yeah, but it's going to be better this it, time around. It's 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 what happens when you know you know it it's life. It, it's what happens when you do video and stuff. Sometimes you lose. Yeah, you know, life goes on. We'll still talk about the same stuff, which is of course the brand spanking new uh, Mercurial Vapor 15 and the where is it the Superfly. Nine. Um, now, obviously, you might have seen either of our videos uh, up on YouTube, but we just figured, you know, let's just, uh, you know, have a little wrapping session on uh, what we actually think. Uh, obviously, you haven't had the boots in hand yet. Uh, we're going to talk more on them when you get them, I guess, when mm -hmm. you have your uh, firsthand experience. But it's just like, it's such a big release that we figured, why not? Why mm -hmm. not? Um, but first of all, Josh, before we get into all of this, how is life over in Canada, apart from, you know, being really bad in terms of power supply? Uh, you know what? <laughs> Life's good otherwise. I'm, I'm so happy to have something not just new to talk about, but something really interesting to talk about. Because yeah, the, yeah. the new Mercurial is always interesting, but I think this is this is like Superfly 4 level of, wow, that we've never seen anything like this before on a mainstream football boot product. Agreed. And the funny thing is that back, you know, back when the Superfly came out, obviously it was right on the tail of, of the Magista. That was mm -hmm. arguably the most revolutionary football boot product we've seen as far as far back as I can remember, right? Um, mm -hmm. It's one of the big innovations we've ever seen in football. Okay. But, you know, I, I agree that this is maybe not at the exact same level, but it's up there. But the hype around this for me, like I'm, I'm hyped, I'm stoked, I'm all, you know, I'm buzzing. But for me, it's not it's not exactly Superfly Four level, is it? No, I, I, but I, it's, I, it's hard to get it's it's hard yeah. to ever get back there, right? It's, I I think we look if if I look back at football boot history, I think there's a couple that really stand out in terms of like implementing technology. Uh, obviously, yeah. original Copa Mundial. Yeah, I think it's important. But, I, I think 1994, important. Important. Yeah. 1994 Adidas Predator, pretty important. Of course, I look at. You could say 1998, Mercurial, on 1998 yeah. Mercurial, sure. Yes. But I really think yeah. Vapor One kind of takes the shape. Like that to me is is modern football boot way before modern football boots ever became a thing. Sure, I can I can live with that. And then I think I yeah, Magista Obra Superfly Four, the the yeah. knitted era. I I think those are these are all really big shifts in football boots. And I think Nike being a brand that's so dependent on their own proprietary technologies. And I think part of the reason why they've been so successful and near the top of the football boot industry for all these years is they're so good at coming out with these proprietary technologies that nobody else can really copy. And I feel like Zoom Air, even though it technically was on a Mercurial 22 years ago, it's back now. It's very different this time around. And I feel like it's it, it might not be revolutionary in terms of how it feels and performs right now, but this is a technology that I can almost guarantee they're going to be developing over the next decade, and, and it could eventually be something crazy. So wait, you're telling me that there's air in this in this? Book? There is air in the new Mercurial. <laughs> if you if if there was any doubt, I mean, you know, uh, speaking of that air thing, uh, we also talked about it today, but. For the viewers' sake, uh, we, we discussed how this looks, and I still can't remember the, the name of the basketball shoe, but it just reminded me of those uh, OG shoes that Scotty Pippen wore back in the day that had the big air um, blocking on as well. Yeah, the, the uh, air more up tempo is the model. Up tempo, okay. Air more up tempo. Air more up tempo is the model. That's yeah. a wicked name. It makes no sense. No, but that's that's also the reason why it's so good. Mm -hmm. Um, oh man, they don't make them like that anymore. They don't make yeah, them like that anymore. Yeah, that's a crazy shoe. Um, and we also, you know, I, see, see, the air 
blocking has kind of split opinion a little bit. What do you, what do you think about it? I really like it. Again, that reference to like a nineties basketball shoe is something that I, I really like. I've heard a lot of mm. comments saying it looks like an American football cleat, which I feel is like the default comment people make when they don't like the <laughs> way time. something looks, which I don't even, I don't even understand what that really means if we're being honest <laughs> But they said that for the Superfly 8, the Dragonfly as well. Oh, yeah, like American there's American there's football. a million. Look, at, you're, you're never going to come out with a design that everyone's going to like. I've heard that it looks like a spider. I've heard that yeah. it looks like the Batman logo. Uh-huh. <laughs> I said I said yesterday, you know, if you've seen Stranger Things, it's the Mind Flayer. It does look a lot like that, actually. Yeah. Um, I, when, to, you, when you see it, you can't unsee it. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm sorry if I ruined it for you. But <laughs> yeah, I, I think, though... It, it's obviously not going to be the graphic on all the colorways. I think this is more or less a launch thing. Um, sure, and sure. But this is this is the Dragonfly equivalent uh, for the new boot, obviously. Yeah, and, and I think we, we've talked about this topic on the podcast a couple times, is why don't football boot brands put more emphasis on insoles and, and like what's happening inside the football boots? And the reason for that is because you can't see it. And, and I think Zoom Air... It, it, it's not super revolutionary right now, but I think it can have a huge impact on the feel of a pair of football boots. But again, it's inside the boots. So in order to get people excited about that, they have to make you aware that the boots have something different inside that other boots don't have. And I think to launch this new model, to launch this new concept, having air literally written on the side of the boot where you can't miss it, I think is ultimately a good thing. And whether or not you like the way that it looks is obviously a matter of personal opinion. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Wow. But I really, wow. I quite like the way that it looks. And I feel like 10 years from now, this is going to be one of those models that we look back on and say, wow, that's that was super memorable. Love it or hate it. See, I agree. I agree on that. And, you know, usually splitting opinion in terms of, of, of being iconic is a very good thing mm -hmm. because people will remember it regardless whether you love it or hate it. Speak, speaking of beauty, by the way, uh, that shirt. <laughs> it's that a, shirt it's is, a good uh, one, it's a, right? It's a, it's a good one. It's a good <laughs> one. And, you know, I mean, I'm not going to say that that boot is iconic, but I hope that in five years time, it's still, it's still going to be one of those designs where you'll think back and, and, and say, wow, that was... That was a little something else. I've mm -hmm. seen it on pitch. Uh, great story, by the way. Um, so I don't know if you've seen the Unisport documentaries where we went to Ghana and, and followed some of the, yep. the boys down there. Um, so one of the guys that we followed, uh, he's called Eric Oteng. A mm -hmm. great guy, by the way. Really good footballer as well. Uh, plays professionally in Finland now. And I just saw, I didn't know, I just saw on his story yesterday that he had actually gotten, he bought the barbershop boots and was rocking them. That, nice. that was that was that was a big moment, you know. Also because I know him, you know, I've I've, yeah. I've, I've heard his story and all that. Um, anyways, that was uh, getting uh, getting sidetracked here. But the Merc colorway aside, because because it is, you know, yeah, it's it's popping and and it and it made a big splash. But it's it's a funny boot, you know, because it is more of the same, but also brand new and 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 kind of feels like the step Nike potential should have taken after the the Superfly 7 and the Vapor 13. Mm -hmm. Because it's such a big, you know, it, it feels like the, uh, you know, the 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 8 and the 14 was kind of like a, you know, a little bit of a, a sidestep to, to you know, keep it familiar while they were developing this. You know, uh, like a kind of a middle step. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I think it's a tricky thing because I, I, I've also heard a lot of comments saying, wow, it doesn't look that different from last year's Mercs. And that's true. Um, I, I think when you're talking about like on paper construction, it's actually very different. Um, there's obviously oh, 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 there's obviously hey, similarities hey, hey. with the upper, but uh, let's look at the history of football boot lines. There's a couple lines that have stood the test of time. Predator, Mercurial, yeah, Tiempo. Yeah. yeah. One has Predator remained like true to its concept for its entire run in the yeah. Mercurial and has remained more or less the most popular football boot on the market for the majority of its lifespan. Sure. And sure. The other, the Predator, decided to reinvent itself multiple times yeah. to yeah. the point where it died yeah. and then came back. And, and it's been and a look, roller coaster of up and down. The Mercurial I was hasn't just gonna had say, that. And, and if we look at the best Predators, uh, at least in, in the eyes of most, most people who remember, uh, they were all the Preds 
uh, back in the years where they were basically the same boots with different executions of the uh, mm-hmm. of the predator elements, right? And 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 like you say, yeah, it's it's a similar construction, but you could also take any other modern like mesh a uh, textile knit football boot today and and say the same thing. It's just mm-hmm. the way you make football boots these days because it just works really well. And and again, as you say, so many things have changed. But what's the most important thing is that to me, they could have used the exact same materials and construction method and all that, but the feeling of the boot has changed. Mm-hmm. And obviously this is something that I, I know it's it's hard for you to really talk about because you haven't haven't seen them in hand yet, haven't tried them on feet. But if you if you get the um if you get the zoom ultra out, exactly. Yeah, I have it right here. I, I, great minds and all that. Yeah, right? I know. I um know. It's not the exact same feeling, but but if you take that 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 squishy bounciness from the Zoom uh, Ultra and and you you kind of only apply that to the forefoot, uh, and somehow it feels a little, I know it's thicker, but it feels a little less squishy mm-hmm. in in the new Mercs. Uh, but 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 that will kind of point you in, in in somewhat of a direction of what this feels like. Uh, and yeah, the interesting thing is that they kind of you know. They, it was in the heel in the Zoom Ultra, and it felt really nice. But somehow, to me, I, I like this better. This execution. Well, yeah, I think what's cool about what they've introduced here on the new Mercurials is that it's not a Zoom unit taken from another Nike product. Oh, yeah. What was featured on the Zoom Ultra is something that was taken out of a basketball shoe that yeah. came out back in like 2019 or something like that. I think 2020. So, yeah, yeah. Like it's not. There was nothing about this that was like unique to this football boot from a development process. Um, this is something that's made specifically for this pair of Mercurials. And I think that's really interesting. I think the yeah. challenge for Nike here is going to be convincing people that this is not just revolutionary, because I think that's always a tricky thing to convince people of, but something that you need something that's going to benefit you in some way. And obviously they're pushing the performance angle. That's that's how Nike as a brand and every sportswear brand for the most part is always going to push the performance angle. But I think it's you true. said a key word there in feel. And I think both of us as boot reviewers, if we want to call ourselves that, that's the challenge of, of products like this where you can you can do your best to describe the way that it feels. Obviously, you the, can't describe you it. You can't yet. describe it, and the performance gains are always difficult to justify. Because truthfully, I think you could play just as well in these as you could in those, as you could in a Superfly Four, as you could in a Vapor Three if you really wanted to. Like, yeah, there, yeah there's yeah. no performance gains to be had from any football boot for the most part. No, no. But but the feel that it offers, I think, and is something that can like, be beneficial. And it's something we've talked about so many times. I don't know how many times I've said it on on tape, right? But it's about the you know the mental uh, benefit, the mental edge that it gives you, and mm-hmm. you know that's at least why I think that that you know uh, high end football boots they have a justification because they just give you a little extra something. They make you feel more on your toes or extra comfortable, like you have extra finesse and all that stuff. And to me, that's what what the Air Zoom Pod does. Because uh, again, you say yeah, performance. Personally, I'm not really feeling that extra responsiveness or, or you know that extra burst of speed that they claim uh, it has. I, I wasn't expecting to either, but but it's such a unique feeling and it's a very pleasant feeling and, and and you know somehow makes you feel more in tune with the boot while at the same time you know taking a little bit of that very sharp response when you have a super thin articulated plate mm-hmm. uh, away from the boot. Uh, so, so so it's really really interesting and I enjoy it a lot and I think when people experience it. They will understand mm-hmm. why. Why at least I, I hope it's going to be a thing in 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 future boots. Uh, and maybe they can develop it so you do get some some sort of benefit. But we've seen it before. Like all right, uh, we've seen it with Boost uh, in in the Preds, and it well, it didn't really do anything, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Uh, but I think that this has a direct impact on how the boot feels, and it's for the most part a very positive one for me. Yeah, I, I think automatically people are going to want to compare this to the implementation of boost on a 17 plus peer control. Mm, mm -hmm. And I mean, I said it, you said it, it, the boost was so thin. It really didn't feel like anything other than just normal foam. Um, the, the only way boost feels like boost is if it's basically like three inches thick, thick, right? Like it has to be pretty, pretty substantial to give you that squishy bouncy feeling. And that's a fact that squishy 
I don't want to say squishy, but bouncy feeling, I think, is what Nike is trying to achieve with this Zoom Air Tech. And that's where they've made waves recently in the running world, where they actually had a certain model band and the, the, the rules of running shoes at a professional level basically needed to be modified based on Nike Zoom Air Tech. So they're, they're kind of taking that technology where if we look at the origins of flying it in football boots as well, kind of started in 2012 at the Olympics with a bunch of different kind of competitive running shoes. And eventually it made its way onto football boots. This is them transitioning that tech into boots once again. And again, not revolutionary right now, but I think down the, down the line, give them some time to develop this. We could have something pretty crazy. Yeah. And, and like you said, it's not revolutionary right now uh, because it's, it's been in football before. Uh, <laughs> Was it back in 2002 that we saw the the uh, the match material um, with the AirZoom part? We had the AirZoom Total 90s. Uh, we've had the Chempos that also had AirZoom in them, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So there's been a, obviously this is a new this is a new implementation. There's a new way of doing things, and I think it works. But but uh, as nice as that is, as that's what people will be talking about. I think the best uh, new feature on on the material is the upper. This really? is called Vapor Posit Plus, Plus. Upper. So we're doing um, we're like iPhones now. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but it is it is like the 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 better, uh, more refined version because technically it's you know it's still what they call va uh, yeah yeah it's it's um componentized upper which is uh, I say it in my tech talk as well it's a it's fancy talk for having different elements doing different things in yeah in, 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 in Nike's synthetic. own press release they used the word data driven in terms of how it was developed. Which oh, I yeah. think is but, always always funny to me because it's da okay, it's data driven, which would imply that every element of that upper is the way that it is because a software or a program decided that that was the best way to do it. But then sure. you still end up with a chevron design split perfectly up the middle that also happens to look really cool. I just don't yeah. really buy the data driven aspect of that. I think, however, the 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 uh, th that's at least my interpretation of it. Uh, the data driven part is the the speed cage, the, what goes on underneath. Uh, uh -huh. and I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it has these little like you can almost see the skeleton inside. So the yeah. upper is basically like speed cage. Then there's this uh, extra little piece of lofted mesh on the forefoot. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you have the um, then you have the chevron mesh, the chevron textile, and then you have the the Nike skin on top. But that speed cage thing. Um, so I saw some of the research photos uh, where they had like. Uh, they, they, they took someone, uh, they strapped it into uh, a, like a booty with a strap in the in the forefoot. Mm -hmm. And then they had them do like directional changes and, and saw how much rollover there was. Okay, then they did it with the midfoot and the heel and there was like significant rollover. And then they went in and, and made like a, a heat map or a pressure map of where uh, pressure was applied when they had those specific um, uh, booties on. And then they also made one with support, midfoot, forefoot and heel and saw how, you know, um, where the pressure was applied and where also the foot was flexing. So I think that's where the data-driven um, thing comes from, that they saw this this pressure map and then mm -hmm. they went in and, and, and designed this cage around ish where where you needed it which happened yeah. to be the same uh, construction method as the roman sandal that was used like way back when in ancient times in yeah ancient times yeah yeah which i don't know like it's cool and i totally believe that nike went and did all of that but oh, I, yeah. I, like the the story of we designed this upper to have structure in the places where you need it most and flexibility in the places you don't um, where have we heard that before? Like, I just feel like we've heard that a thousand times at this point. More so. about every, every modern football boot launch. <laughs> yeah, so. But, but to be fair to them, to be fair to them, um, it does, to me at least, seem like the lockdown in, in the new Superfly 9, at least, I uh, haven't worn the Vapor yet, but in the Superfly 9 is more effective than it is in the Superfly 8. So, so I appreciate that. And, and that's impressive because the upper here, the upper is stupidly soft. And, and I'm, I'm talking, this is straight out of the box, haven't worn it yet, but, but especially, you know, when you play in it for a while and, you know, you've it's warmed up, your feet have gotten warm. Mm -hmm. The upper is stupidly soft and pliable and it feels so, so good. I know we keep talking about the old Mercs, uh, the yeah. Tejin uppers and all that stuff. And, and someone said, uh, Nike should bring back the Tejin uppers. No, they shouldn't. Because this is way this is better. It's, it's thinner. It's super supportive, at least for me. Uh, and and the fit in these is unreal because of how that 
how soft that upper is. So, so really, use really the word happy. soft, which is not a word that I would use to describe most mercurial uppers. I, no. I think I think soft, you could maybe say about vapor eight and nine. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It, it does feel like it's. It has a bit more structure to it, so it's not as. Um, I would say I wouldn't call it flimsy, but you know, like free flowing. Yeah, as, it, as those are pliability work. to it. Yeah, but it's pliable is probably the better word. It's just so flexible. Um, mm -hmm. around your foot, and and there's nothing really. There's no um. There's no hindering your foot movements and how it how it follows the. The, the shape of your foot, how it sculpts it, around the foot. It, it's, it's funny because I think we, we as reviewers, again, I hate to call ourselves that, but as, as people that have it's better worn- better than boot influencers, right? <laughs> boot influencers, yeah. I, <laughs> uh, I, I can't, I can't imagine telling always. somebody that I'm an influencer. That just, <laughs> it irks me. Um, I, I think in, unless you've tried a significant number of boots- of, of varying styles, it's difficult to understand how the pliability of an upper can evolve. Because I think we go out and we criticize the feel of the previous vapor posit upper on the Vapor 14 and Superfly 7 and say, oh, it's not as, it doesn't feel as nice as the Speedflow 0.1 or even the Speedflow Plus upper. It's, yeah, it's, it's lacking in that right. regard, right? Yeah, but until yeah, you've yeah. tried like an Evo Speed SL, the boot that lasts 10 games. Like, I feel like very few people got to try that. And I think that's a great example of like, wow, this is what maximum pliability feels like, but also- but not necessarily good. Zero structure at all, yeah, right? It's, yeah, yeah. it's the, it's like all the stats went into pliability, none of the stats went into structure. And it's trying to find that happy medium. And unless you've had the experience to try all of these kind of different balances of those two sure, elements, sure. it's yeah. difficult to, to feel that distinction. So I think it's cool for seemingly such a small change to what is Vapor Posit Plus, because obviously they're utilizing the same technologies as what was before. But I think if you change around the composition and the construction, you can actually end up with something that feels not necessarily that different, but potentially significantly improved. I would definitely say it's better for me. I liked the upper, the, the first vapor posit upper. I, I thought it was great, um, especially with time. I, I think this is just so much better out of the box. And um, and what I will say is though, I, I, I did have, okay, let me try and paint you a picture of what it feels like here. Imagine that, uh, you know, the, 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 the flexibility, the softness that that um, ability to wrap around your foot that the Superfly Seven and um, and Vapor Thirteen had, combine that with that with that uh, thin feel, that that slightly more naked feel of of uh, the latest generation Superfly Eight and Vapor Fourteen, and then put this somewhere in the middle. Mm. That it's like a it's like a good marriage of those two. Um, and we often talk about how the Vapor Thirteen was the most comfortable of the materials, and I think this is this is. This is doing a good job of coming very, very close to that while still giving you that that more traditionally synthetic you feel, if you know what I mean. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Which I think is good. I, I, I like the fact that they haven't necessarily just defaulted back to flying it. Because I think oh, yeah. if we're talking about a football boot brand playing it safe, which I think we've said that a lot about Nike as of late, certainly with the Phantom GT line. And even arguably with the new Tiempo, as much as that's something that we've kind of talked about for a while, like the Tiempo needs to be more traditional, it's yeah. safe. The Legend it's 9, as good as it is, is a safe football boot. Yeah. And I, I think what they've done here is as unsafe as they possibly could get while still innovating in a way that is meaningful. And, and the meaningful... The, the, I've never used that word on the podcast, but I think that's something that I'll probably say a lot more moving forward is meaningful new technology. Because I think we've seen so much in the world of football boots now, it, it's so easy to just say, oh, we invented this new thing and it's great now. Like, yeah, like yeah. the introduction yeah, okay. of the, the tungsten weight on the Predator Edge, which I don't know if you saw the video that I posted. I, I ended up pulling it out just to see how much it actually weighs. It weighs nothing. It's, it's yeah. completely useless, and I question as to whether or not it's even tungsten based on the, the statistics that I can pull up versus when you're comparing steel and tungsten. That's not I, like it, yeah. I, I don't know what they did. But like that that's, that's a technology, yes. Is it doing something? I'm sure yeah. statistically it makes some kind of a difference uh, in the most minor way possible. And you're going to have those people that love to argue in the comment section with you and say, oh, 
every little millimeter counts in the game of football. Sure. Sure it does. But I'm still a big believer in some technologies in football boots being significantly more impactful and meaningful. And I think if you're going to introduce something new, it has to... It has to make the experience of that football boot different from anything else. And I think they've done that with this new Merc. I agree. And and, and usually it would also be a good thing if that significantly different experience is better. Mm -hmm. Predator Edge. Yes. That's also significantly different. It's just significantly more unpleasant (laughs) than than a freak. But it is what it is. Um, What did I want to bring up? Um, Right. Oh, yeah. So this is is one of the things with the new material that I haven't really fully wrapped my head around yet. And that is the fit, the way these feel. Uh, Mm -hmm. The material as a a boot where it is right now. Because somehow... um, this will probably be one of the boost, uh, especially the Superfly 9, one of the boots that I will wear the most over the coming year. Mm-hmm. I, I genuinely like it a lot. It's that good. It, 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 will, it will most likely be one of my go-to boots alongside the, the Morelli Neo 3 Betas. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's one of the best football boots on the market. Like it does so many things right. And I think so many people will like it. It still feels like a speed boot, but it's also very generally appealing. But that generally appealing thing also means that somehow to me, and I'm not entirely sure I, I feel this way yet, but 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 I get vibes that this might be the least mercurial, mercurial yet. Do you know what I mean? Like it's kind of really going away from that uh, uncompromisingly raw speed boot, hardcore oriented a uh, vision that we had back in the day that made the material basically a running spike, a track spike with with studs on, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a better football boot for it, but the like the the nostalgia also, you know, has taken a bit of a beating with this. If you look at the vapor, do I make sense? No, you make sense. Feel- you make sense in that I think Nike has very much realized that the mercurial is is their champion, if you want, yes, for lack yeah, of a yeah. better word, right? The Tiempo line exists and has its following and probably will always exist as something more traditional. Um, Nike's always going to have their spin from a technology perspective, but it's a leather football boot, which is something that the Mercurial never will be. Yeah, And I think if we look at the Phantom GT line right now, it is... It, it, is is the, it, is. it is the epitome of Nike going half-ass. Like it just is. <laughs> like it's it's not it's not focused in any direction. It's like here's a couple technologies that aren't that important that don't necessarily step on the toes of the Mercurial of the Tiempo, and it's the it's the middle product. And I mm. think the sales reflect that. I think the popularity reflects that. Our opinions reflect that. It's it's an okay football boot and nothing more. Where mm. I think the Mercurial certainly with this new generation with with all the new tech that they're implementing it really does feel like this is this is Nike saying here's all our best technology in one football yeah. boot and if it skews if it skews the original speed boot esque direction that it was going in that's fine cuz it's it, it still feel- the mercurial is it's more reputation based than any other line of football oh, boots oh absolutely Absolutely. And and this is this is just my thing that Nike must also be aware that yes, they're opening this up, you know, they're opening up the awesomeness of the material to more people, which is a great thing. It feels like the, you know, the what's what's that word? Um uh philanthropical thing to do. Like mm-hmm. more people get to uh at least if you're Nike and you look at it that way, like uh but also they must be aware that that companies like Puma, like uh Adidas, are perhaps a bit more focused in their approach to speed boots right now. A bit more like a uh, niche. And they might, I guess they are okay with that. You know, like mm-hmm. if they take up a, a, a majority of the market because everyone just wears Mercurial, I guess they're fine. I just I, I, I just wanted to bring it up. And again, I'm not yeah. sure I really know where I stand and I might be rambling a bit, but it's, I'd like to hear what you guys think uh, about this development, the Mercurial becoming a bit more generally appealing in the comment section right down below. Uh-huh. And I... I as much as I, I like football boots that have a very focused concept, I, I understand why Nike would do something like that. And again, I think we get caught up in our little boot nerd bubble of people with very strong opinions that care very deeply about every little detail of a pair of football boots. And yeah, there are going to be those people that are going to say, you know what? 
I think the Puma Ultra is going to be my speed boot of choice this year over a pair of Mercurials, but I don't think that's the general consumer. I no. think general consumer, there's a lot of hardcore Mercurial fans that are always going to wear Mercurials. They might lose a couple if they don't like the less focused concept, but I think they're going to gain even more if they make the boot more appealing to other people. And, and it's still it's still fast. Now I'm a you know I'm a Mercurial kind of guy. You know I, I mm-hmm. love my Mercurials. I've o- always have, always will, right? And the thing is that yes, it's perhaps less roll speed focused, but I still love it, and mm-hmm. I'm still gonna wear it. And it might be you know the more blah blah, blah blah English. It might be the most enjoyable Mercurial for me to wear in terms of like comfort and wearability and fit and all that stuff. Which yeah. is which which feels weird to say. I I think it's still like. We say lost its focus on being a hardcore speed boot with with a grain of salt because I still, still think you look you look at that silhouette minus any graphics it's still very clearly a mercurial and and it's and it's and it's you know the the, the responsiveness the, the grip you get from from the tooling is still very very good it's super aggressive perhaps a bit more so in like multi directions rather than just you know linear. Uh, acceleration. Yeah. Think the older version was slightly better at that, but like multi-directional um, acceleration, and and you know, haven't felt that much in terms of the the improved deceleration braking thing. But it just mm-hmm. it feels really good wh- when you do these aggressive movements. Uh, and it's speaking of speaking of that, that's another significant change of this new generation of Mercurial. And you could even argue probably the biggest change to a Mercurial stud pattern throughout its history is this tri-star shape. Like the Mercurials yeah. have never had something like that. It's always been straight blades and then obviously chevrons, but th- this is quite a bit different. It is. And it's, a bit, you know, we've we've heard talks about all of this, you know, speed is multi-direction. It's not only about acceleration, but it's also about mm-hmm. deceleration. We've heard that tune before, but it feels like Nike are really committing to that now with uh, with Mercurial, which is, which is interesting to see. The, the so, only thing so, that's funny to me about the stud pattern, just really quickly, is that it is something that we've seen a long time ago. Yeah. G, uh, GS360 was the first time we saw something like that, and that was 2018? Yeah, 2018, 19, yeah. Think. Something like that. So, oh, but that was, and it was a great stud pattern. Oh, and really we good. also saw it on, 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 the, on the Zoom Ultra, right? Uh, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Um, so so yeah, I really like it. But guys, let us that uh, lots of thoughts on on the materials and obviously oh, also we're gonna- also we we I hate to applaud Nike even more, but I'm so pleased with them for not hiking up the prices because yeah. Zoom Air Tech, yeah. similar to carbon fiber sole plates in the Elite series back in the day, Nike saw that opportunity to say, hey, we have something nobody else has, and we're going to charge for it, and that's why we saw football boots that retailed for four hundred dollars. Knowing that Zoom Air was coming to a mainstream Mercurial, I fully expected price increases, and I'm very pleased to see that that's not the case. So making it more generally appealing, uh, keeping the price down despite adding super innovative technology. I mean, they are the philanthropists of the business, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) I'll take 10% Nike, by the way. Thank you very much. Um, (laughs) No, no. Um, But guys, again... Let us know what you think. Uh, obviously, I I look forward to hearing Josh's thoughts on these as well. Uh, might be that he wildly disagrees with me and absolutely hates <laughs> them. Let's see what happens. Um, I, I I think you'll like them a lot, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But let's see. But we do have some questions before we round us this uh, uh, version two of episode 140. And the first one is from Brandon Lobos. Hello, Boot Nerds. Great video. Um, well, thank you very much. Uh, which boot company would you guys personally like to own any one of Adidas, Nike, Puma, Mizuno, Under Armour, New Balance. Which would you like to own, and why? Much love. You're the owner. <laughs> that's that's a tough question. Now, okay, let's uh, let's let's answer. I mean, obviously, if you want to just own a company, I mean, I mean Nike, Nike right? Like yeah, they're just the they're the big ones, right? Yeah. Uh. Um, and I think that would be cool from the perspective that you're just working with such high budgets and you can, you can go crazy basically. Money's fun. Yeah, it is. But I mean, it, you know, from obviously, you know, I know where people will give a stick for this and uh, I love to own Mizuno because there's, there, you know, <laughs> I go in and say, okay, look, the product is there. We know that the passion is there. The craftsmanship is there. 
we should maybe take a slightly more marketing-based approach to things, and there's a lot of potential there. Similarly with New Balance, um, but, you know, if my if my brain speaking, Nike, any day of the week, a hard Mizuno. Okay. I, I kind of view this question as, like, which kind of challenge would I like to take on? And I think I think New Balance would be my answer simply based on I feel like that is a brand they're making better boots than they ever have. So I'll say that much. You should be the CEO instead of the owner. You should be the CEO then. Yeah, yeah. They've been doing better boots than they ever have, but I still think like I walk into the New Balance store and I look at their running shoes and I'm like, wow, they make some cool stuff. Why isn't this in the football boots? And I just feel like they have so much untapped potential as far as technology. And you can say the same thing about Mizuno as well, but I would love to try and see what kind of gains in market share are possible within New Balance football that they're, they're gaining now, but I think they could be doing a lot better. I agree. And, and you know, whether whether it's too late for them, to, to they, if they've gotten started too late, I don't know. Uh, exciting times for them. And I should say, you know, the potential is there. The money is there, uh, mm-hmm. right? And, and the platforms are there. So it would be fun to see. Maybe I'll, uh, if I could be the CEO, uh, instead of the owner, I'd, I'd probably also take New Balance. Mm, that's okay. that, that's the big challenge, right? Francesco Evangelista. Easy question for Josh. If you could choose what boot to design, what would it be? Let's say one current and one retro boot. Like I'm actively designing a boot or I'm taking credit for a design? Are you basically pulling a barbershop? I'm pulling a barbershop. Yeah. Okay. So it's, we're the talking drip, a col- we're talking colorways, or are we talking yeah. about like okay colorways? Color, colorways, yeah. Okay, I would like to do. I mean, how would you not want to do a mercurial? Like, it's just I feel like the mercurial line is responsible for some of the craziest colorways throughout football boot history. I think that has to be it. Brav. <laughs> Ultra. Ultra, mention the ultra. The man. Puma ultra has is pretty wild. I, I can't lie, but if, I, if I'm if i given a choice to, to collaborate with any brand to make a colorway, I mean, it'd be so cool to have a Nike Mercurial. Friendship <laughs> over. <laughs> no, I, I get you, I get you, that's fair. Okay, one retro boot then. Oh. Which boot would you really like to just go back and say, I want to do this on that boot? Mm. Mm-mm. I'm... My brain immediately went to Predator Mania. I'd love to do one of those. What would and you then do my that? brain also my brain also went to a, a T ninety laser two. Of course it did. I don't know. But, I don't your brain I don't always, have the answers on the spot. Y- your brain always goes to the T ninety laser two. I know, right? I love that boot. I love it. It's still to me, I still look at that and think, wow, that is the cool one of the coolest designs ever. It is cool. It is cool, to be fair. To be fair, what were but retro boot? Which which one would I like to go ham on? Mm, uh, but that's a tough one, to be honest. Uh, maybe the I don't know vapor threes. Such a clean vapor design. Vapor threes, yeah, yeah. Vapor three is good. Yeah, could be could be fun. Um, I don't know. Good question though. Uh, there's also one from um. From Chris Rico here, which I thought was fun, also on the barbershop video, it said, man, I really wanted to pick them up until Jay said that it would look good with the Barca and PSG jersey. I'm a Real Madrid fan. And then um, there's this guy called D Comics DA108 that said, they would look good with anything, to be fair. And Chris Rico says, yeah, I picked them up. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) And and D Comics DA108 said, nice. And I also (laughs) thought, Nice, Chris. Nice one. <laughs> nice one. I like that. I like just uncompromising. You know what? Yeah, they might look like be Barca colors. I'll get them anyway. Yeah. I'll get them anyway. Um, there's, also, um, there's also this uh, question from Neo. Uh, hey, lads, what do you think of the new materials? Well, watch this episode. Um, yeah. Based on uh, J Mike's review, I feel like they could be a really good, but they don't seem to fit wide feet. So I'm interested in more details on that and the opinion of Josh as well. And I'm like, did you, thanks for watching my review, but did you watch it? Yeah. I, I, you know, I've, I've had comments saying, you know, like, oh, um, I saw some guys on a, on a Chinese forum just 
you know, quoting some of my reviews saying, oh, J. Mike said that it's too wide. Now it's not a mercurial anymore. That's not what I say, by the way. But for me, this is one of the widest mercurials in a long, long time. Yeah. Which is one of the reasons why it feels more generally appealing because more foot shapes will feel at home in these. So, yeah. I just... When I thought I, it was funny. It's always difficult to say because you don't know who's commenting and you don't know what their foot shape is. But having worked in football boots retail, I can tell you from experience that the oh, majority of people that I did, I don't know if you know this, did Jay, you I used to work, work in a football in, store, Josh. I did. I did I for a little while. I need to hear that story one day. You just need to hear it again. I haven't mentioned it in like 10 episodes, so I figured I'd bring it back up. Uh, yeah. But uh, from firsthand experience, there was only out of hundreds of pairs that I had sold, there was only like maybe two or three instances that I can think of where somebody genuinely had feet so wide where it's like, wow, you know what? I don't know what boots put you in. Like the, the majority of my feet are wide comments come from people not necessarily understanding that a football boot is not supposed to fit like your DC skateboard shoes. Sure. Like, sure. I, don't, I don't know <laughs> what else to say. <laughs> yeah, like... Oh, those were the days, man. Um, I never had a pair, thankfully. But but, Good but you're for right. You. I mean, you know I have I have seen. Uh, you totally had a pair. I can hear. But I have seen people <laughs> with with whose whose feet are so wide that you just go like, nah, nah, that's that's not on. But but these days, you know, most football boots are relatively accommodating. I would say uh, there are some. People. What? To most people, yeah. To that's mo- to most that's people, the thing exactly. that people don't. Nobody. No brand wants to make a product, especially when you're talking about footwear, that is really so niche that it's only yeah. going to fit 5% of the population. Yeah. And even the Neos, which are relatively slim, fit a lot of people. Like I have mm-hmm. my, my, my good colleague and friend, Philip uh, PWG, who has like, he has a really wide foot, a second to only Jolter, who, which like, is the stupidest wide foot I've ever seen in my life. Uh, but Phil also has a really wide flat foot, right? And he also fits in the Neos, which mm-hmm. is like, yeah, it's it's nice to get that really slim, snug fit. But if you have a wide foot and you really want it tight fitting, it's not a problem. Mm-hmm. And for me, you know, in the Mercs, there's actually a little bit of, you know, there's a little bit of extra room in the midfoot, just like excess space. I don't hate it. It's not a problem, but it's just like, oh, what I liked it a little bit tighter, as in the, the Vapor 11s. That that fit that last with that, that was upper, perfect for you. My God, Ugh. yeah. And that's and look at that's that's the nature of football boots. You know, like you're never gonna have. It's very rare that you're gonna come across a boot that fits your foot perfectly. And if you find that, I, and you really don't want to lose it, buy as many pairs of that specific model as you can and never change. Unless, unless, and I'm gonna throw a boot in the air here that that you 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 might you might be sick of hearing it. If you go and get the Adidas 11 Pro 2 SL. It is my claim that it will fit everyone like a glove and everyone will love it and they should totally remake those in 10,000 pairs and everyone would just be wearing those boots. 11 Pro 2 SLs. Yeah. I, again, talk about I what, what's, the, what's the best boot ever? That, that Josh right there <laughs> is the best football boot ever made. Ever made. Perfect Very football boot. Claim. Um, uh, there's, there's a good friend of mine, Joma, um, who who actually, you know, reminded me of that boot, um, made sure that I, I I I got a pair, pushed me over the edge. I was like, nah, let me put of you. Didn't have a pair back in the day, and then I got a pair, and it is glorious. Um, and he said, like, on paper, perfect football boot, and he's right. Does everything. <laughs> Does everything. It's light, great, great tooling. That leather is Mizuno quality. It's, like, super comfortable. Heel is high, and, like, well... I'm just I'm anyway. picturing I'm picturing an episode a football boot themed episode of Family Feud where Steve Harvey's uh, yeah. asking a hundred people were pulled on what the greatest football boot of all time is and they keep guessing and everyone's wrong and then by the time it's over it's finally one person said eleven pro two SL <laughs> and no one would have ever guessed that and currently no one's ever gonna guess it I'm 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 watching this pair on eBay you know my size which is super rare to find and the yeah. guy's in the U S and he doesn't ship to Europe and I checked also. I would have asked you. He doesn't ship to Canada either. So I I can't buy them. I can't physically buy these boots because why why can I ship them? It's pain. And I think the reason for that, for anyone that's ever wondering why someone on eBay wouldn't want to ship to your country, 
Um, number one, eBay just has huge fees on everything, including shipping, okay. um, which sucks. Um, and then there's international duties. So mm. in the event that he sold them to me or you, whoever it was, and it crossed the border and then the, the Canadian border decided, you know what? There's $120 in duties and $45 in taxes. Right. They don't give you your package until you pay that extra $180 on top of however much you paid for the boots. Sure. And it ends up with rejected packages. And then you have to send it back. And then now you're out the shipping cost. It's just, it, it can be a nightmare for somebody that doesn't understand that. Okay. And isn't willing to take on that risk because there's, there is a chance it's going to get to you and you won't be charged dues and taxes, but it, it's, it can happen. Right. Sounds like you burned your fingers on that one. It sounds like I've done it a few times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, but now you, but now you know my pain. Um, yeah. So, um, so yeah. Um, Josh, that was episode 140 version two of the Boo Nose podcast. I can't wait for you to get, um, your hands and your feet I, in a yeah, pair of Yeah, at the time figures. we're recording this, I am hoping to have them any minute. Ooh. Like they're well, then on we know the what, way. Uh, then we know what to talk about in the next episode of the Boomers yeah. podcast, where I assume you will be wearing another really beautiful uh, football shirt. I wink, probably wink. will. We'll see. <laughs> hint, hint. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Uh, with those words, uh, let us yeah leave a like on the video if you had a good time. Let us know your questions, which we'll bring up in the Q and A section of uh, episode one hundred forty one, which we'll hopefully only do once. And uh, with those words, <laughs> I've been J Mike. You know, subscribe to everyone, and I approve this message. Thanks see for later, listening guys. and yeah. watching. <laughs>